How's it going, everyone? Welcome to this week's Q&A. So like any other week, if you want a chance for any questions being answered, make sure you do drop a comment down below and I'll either answer that question in your comment or in a future video just like this one or make a dedicated video if need be. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the first question and it is what to do if you happen to break a bolt. In this particular case, we're talking about uh, a broken bolt inside of a lower air box cover. So air boxes sometimes are held together, the upper, uh, the upper and the lower parts by some screws or bolts. Um, and they, they're very thin, they break very easily. First of all, I recommend applying some grease every time you remove them, put them back on. And second of all, I would tighten them by hand. So for this particular case, uh, you could try to remove the upper lid and see if there's enough head on there, enough bolt, so we can put some vice grips and spin them out. If not, you're probably going to want to take some female extractors. Uh, if that doesn't work, then maybe you want to grab a very thin reverse a drill bit and spin it out. That way, try to get a center punch, get it in there, get it as centered as possible. These bolts shouldn't be too tight unless if it broke on the way out. In that case, you're probably going to need a lower air box um, at that point. Even if you can't get the bolt in there, you probably have to do that. Or drill all the way through and then put a bolt and a nut just clamping them down together. So I'll have uh, some links to some of these tools in the description section down below. Now, if you happen to break a bolt in any other situation, drilling some heat, um, you know, some uh, extractors of some sort, male or female, depending on the situation. Again, I'll have, um, you know, links in the description section down below to some of the tools that I do use and could be helpful to this uh, situation. So hopefully that answers the question for you. All right, so the next question is a push to shift, um, you know, how to release them if the battery dies or if you can't get them out of park or whatever the case may be. So this would be for the nine speed and the 10 speed uh, cars. So uh, some of the newer cars, a lot of them have the push buttons to shift, no longer have a shift lever. So uh, they do sell a special tool for the nine speed. It's very, very expensive and probably something you won't buy uh, if you have one of these vehicles, unless if you're a shop, then probably be a good investment. As far as the 10 speed goes um you they don't sell any tool for it although you take a plier or something like that and just turn it in a lock in place the ninth speed you have to turn it and then lock the tool so it can hold it there uh sometimes we don't have the tool only certain guys has this tool uh, and we just have to sit underneath the hood and hold it in place where it releases in neutral and somebody has to hold it there while we push the vehicle in. Um, not something that that simple to do. I do have a video on a 10 speed release. So I'll attach that video. It's a short uh, in the description section uh, down below if you want to check it out. I'll try to make a video on a nine speed one just so you guys can see how we do it. We do have the tool once again, but we when we don't have the tool, there are ways around it. But basically, if you end up having a dead battery and you can't get the car out of park or you have some liquid damage and a switch no longer works you're probably going to be in some big trouble hopefully the car is parked for you if not then it's going to be in a way and you're probably going to need some sort of jacks and uh, wheel dollies or something like that to get the car uh, from where you need it to go uh, temporarily so hopefully that answers the question for you all right so the next question is what is the importance of underbody shields so a lot of these shields are just made out of very thin plastic or very thin aluminum so um, yes, they have a purpose. Uh, majority of that purpose is for aerodynamics, although it might be very minimum. They are there for a reason. And as these car companies chase MPGs, um, obviously they try to get the most out of each and every car. So those uh, uh, shields, they do serve that purpose. Also, if some small debris is to kick up from the bottom, some small pebbles or anything like that, it kind of protects everything going on over there, you know, brake lines, uh, uh, oil pan and stuff like that, transmission. Although once again, they are very, very thin. So if you run over something bigger, they're not gonna do you any good. And a lot of times in the winter time here, especially where it snows, um, snow gets piled up in there as they get older, they kind of get bent and worn out and warped. Snow gets in there and they end up falling down from all that weight and causing a whole bunch of noise and ripping off and stuff like that. So yes, they are good. Uh, if you happen to have one rip off, I would not go uh, crazy over it. I wouldn't stress it. Um, obviously try to put it on uh, when uh, you have the time and a chance and the money to repair it. Although some of these shields can get pretty pricey. So just see the situation. If you do just mostly city driving, you'll probably be okay. If you're constantly on a highway, probably a little bit more beneficial to you for aerodynamics and miles per gallon purposes. So hopefully it answers the question for you. 
All right, so the next question is a steel braided lines versus a rubber hose. So this will apply both to the clutch and the brake hoses. So as rubber gets old and uh, worn out and soft, before, uh, let's just use the brakes here for an example, before you apply the brake pedal and it reaches the caliper piston, some of that fluid is gonna be going through that hose and expense through the hose before it actually goes all the way through. Now, in the winter time, probably won't be as big of a factor. Although, if you are driving it hard in the summer, you might notice some spongy-ish type of brakes, so some steel braided, uh, brake lines at this point might be super beneficial same thing applies to the clutch if you're feeling some more sort of a weird pedal you might have something bigger going on but if uh, you know it happens mostly when it's hot chances are that rubber hose is expanding and you are losing some of that direct pressure to the uh, slave cylinder from the master cylinder at that point so is it a urgency to get this done absolutely not if you're racing the car probably would be one of my first things to do uh, along with some upgraded fluid um, you know to increase that boiling point uh, although for most street applications probably won't be necessary and most people probably will not feel the difference again if you are racing a car driving it very spiritually then probably will be beneficial to you and probably something that you should do early on rather than later now these hoses they do deteriorate over time so again with uh, increased um, you know abuse they're gonna take a uh, toll quicker so something you want to upgrade uh, if you're driving a car aggressively so hopefully answers the question for you all right so last question of the week and again, if you want a chance for one of your questions being answered, make sure you do drop a comment down below or any suggestions you may have for the uh, channel. So uh, the question is, are there upgraded a J series a timing belt uh, tensioner? So uh, as you may or may not know, the J series, so the J series is the V6 found in most Honda uh, SUVs, uh, the minivan, MDX, uh, stuff like that. So a lot of these cars do use the J series and they do have a hydraulic uh, tensioner for the time belt. So the job of the tensioner is to apply pressure on a belt to pick up the slack. So if that tensioner does go bad and fail, then obviously there could be some slack and it could jump a timing. So these tensions do fail prematurely. A lot of times they'll have a cold start issue. That's because the piston no longer has pressure. It is bouncing around like that. As the car warms up, uh, the fluid gets a little bit thicker and it stops doing that. So um, they do fail once again. A lot of times they do fail before the time belt is done, is due. So, um, Yes, upgrading the tensioner is beneficial. Uh, if you do the time belt, you should always replace the time belt tensioners at that time. Do not go without replacing that time belt tensioner. Even if it's not making noise, I promise you 99 about 100 times, it's going to be leaking. It will not make it to the next time belt interval, which is every seven years or 105,000 miles, give or take, something like that. So uh, a solution is a power rev racing or P2R. I'll have the link for that in the description section down below. They do make a manual tension. So my only concern is at this point, uh, people over tighten the belt. So as humans, we like to make sure everything is nice and tight. So if you are purchasing one of these tensioners, just don't overdo it. Don't go crazy. Don't over tighten it way too much. Just try to um, measure out what the difference is of the piston that's out on the hydraulic tensioner and try to match that on the aftermarket tensioner now i don't know the long-term longevity of these tensioners although they are a manual tensioner and no fluid will leak out of them causing you any sort of issues in that sense so uh, probably something i personally would stay away from unless if i'm building an engine a high performance type of engine as a normal consumer a hydraulic tensioner will probably be fine for most of you although once again they do have a high rate ferry so that being said hopefully that answers the question for you and i'll catch everyone on the next one